this is Divided Films, the podcast where we talk about movies that audiences and critics do not agree on. Uh, my name is JJ, and with me always is my co-host, Keith. Hello! And um, th- today we are uh, recording our final episode of our first season. We did it. So uh, it's very exciting. It's been a lot of fun recording this first season. And I believe our tally so far, we have sided with the critics seven times and the audience four times. So I guess we're a bunch of snooty guys who we're, we're a bunch of snooty look guys. down on the common man. But, uh, you know, we're going to see maybe where this last episode maybe we'll go the other way. I don't know. We picked what we think is probably the most divisive film in recent years. It's about time we tackled it. Yes. Um, it is the 2017 sci-fi blockbuster epic Star Wars The Last Jedi. And uh, this movie falls into the category of a positive score from critics at, I believe, a 92%. And... Um, <laughs> There's our, too many people in this room, by guests, the way. We have a lot of <laughs> guests, and they just cannot wait to speak their opinions. So uh, I'll just get to it real quickly. Uh, and then uh, the audience, like, huge difference. Audience score a 44% approval rating. Um, so clearly a huge divide. The critics consensus, Star Wars The Last Jedi honors the saga's rich legacy while adding some surprising twists and delivering all the emotion-rich action fans could hope for. That is what the critics say. And um, there's a lot of tension in this room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there isn't an audience consensus, but maybe our uh, audience team will, you know, have a summary on their thoughts. So basically, this episode is going to be a little different. We're going to actually have less of a review discussion and more of a debate. And we've brought back some guests from our previous episodes who feel very strongly about this movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to try to keep it civil, but no guarantees. So. <laughs> Um, we have two guests coming back who are on the side of the critics who enjoy this movie. So coming back from our third episode on arachnophobia is Andy Martinez. Ding, 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 ding. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome back, Andy. Uh, uh, coming back from our fourth episode, which was about hereditary, is Dominic Nero. Hi, everyone. So well, happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Dom. So uh, you guys, you know, you guys have expressed that you enjoy the last. Jedi, so you guys are representing Team Critics, mm-hmm. so uh, be prepared to defend your opinions. Mm-hmm. And uh, then on Team Audience, we are bringing back from our seventh episode, which was on War of the Worlds, James C. Phillips III. Glad to be back, everyone. Thank you. Uh, glad to have you back, James. And coming back from our tenth episode, which was about the classic collateral beauty, is our uh, good friend Heather Tedesco. Saving the best for last. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, you guys both feel very strongly about The Last Jedi, but you know, Keith and I, we're kind of on the fence. We're perfect to moderate because I'm really, we're really in the middle on this We are, and so you guys, your goal is to sway us to your side. I I would say our tomato meters are right at that like threshold. We can go either way, and you guys are gonna try to push us in your direction, and we're gonna see who comes out victorious. So, um, you know, with that being said, um, you know, one last thing about how we tackle this, I feel like this movie, is mainly three storylines that come together at the end. So we would probably, uh, you know, tackle this movie by the different uh, storylines that are in there. And Oh, you mean because they don't seamlessly work together as a film? <laughs> that was my first question. <laughs> <laughs> the first, Gee, first why would we have to do that, JJ? <laughs> the first shot has been just uh, holding my crossing examination <laughs> until uh, properly needed. Okay, yeah. so... Uh, I guess you guys, you know, here we go. Let's uh, let the fight begin. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, Heather, you are the most anxious to express your opinion. Let's just start real quick. What was your initial response when you first saw Star Wars The Last Jedi based on your expectations and what you felt afterwards? Well, so, you know, I came into it from a Force Awakens being like, you know, that was fun. It was just fun, right? You know, how bad could this next one possibly be? I had a good time. I felt like my heart was warmed. And then I was just like, if you're going to stick with a franchise that's this old and this well established by like, not just films, but cartoons and other parts of the series and fan fix and this, that and other, you have to at least follow some of the universe building. And I think that my initial 
reaction was just a lot of anger that it felt like they weren't playing by the rules that George Lucas established in the first place. Oh, okay. okay. And I think that that was my overwhelming first impression. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, uh, and James, uh, as Heather's teammate, uh, well, what it, can you add to um, that? As a film, I was kind of underwhelmed. I felt like just as a standalone film, I was like, okay, like it was a cool light show, but a lot of the plot points I didn't like, yada, yada, yada. As uh, an entry into the greater Star Wars universe, I think it's the worst entry of the series. Um, it, that that part um, actually left me really upset. Like I, I oh. as just the film, it's like, okay, it wasn't that great. I'm, I'm fine with that. But like as an entry to the Star Wars film, as film franchise, it really just, just, I I took it personal, I guess oh. you could say. Like I took it as a personal friend. Like how could you blunder it this bad? That, that that's what I feel like it was just like a, a completely like tripping over themselves the entire movie. That's what I felt like the execution was. Okay, okay. Well now I will uh hand it over to you, <laughs> you guys. Uh, uh, all right. I, I'm waiting like there are like it looks good kill right now. I really um could swear you guys should see this. So I'll start with Andy, because Dom is scaring me right now. <laughs> Andy, I'm both scared. I'm uh, your opening both. statement. All right, well, uh, people of the jury, thank you for being here today. <laughs> yeah. um, our case is clear. Uh, well, so we're kind of just talking about like our first impressions. Uh, yeah. Watching. Okay, so, um, so obviously, you know, I, we could all say like everyone here is a big Star Wars fan. Like definitely one of them. I've loved Star Wars since I was a kid. Um, going into this, I very much loved The Force Awakens. Um, I was very much eagerly anticipating the next, uh, chapter of this, like, kind of saga they're building right now. Uh, but kind of like from an objective standpoint, I knew that if I went in with high hopes and with like, you know, kind of all my marbles in one basket, like, oh, I'm so excited to go see this movie and I can't wait. Um, I knew that I would have uh, a lot more to be disappointed about. And also uh, stuff that I might like that later would turn on me. And like, it just, it, you know, going in with high expectations or even just low expectations kind of severs your uh, connection with being able to analyze it later down the line. So I went in and I was like, if it's bad, it's bad. If it's good, it's good. Star Wars isn't, has not always been perfect. So that, you know, would not be uh, uh, outside of the norm. I came out of that movie and I really, uh, I loved it. And I, I recognized that there was a lot of uh, controversy controversy, <laughs> controversy <laughs> surrounding a lot of like the choices made in that movie. Um, I wasn't like super shocked that like a good deal of my friends didn't like it. Um, but I don't know, just the more and more I watch it, uh, there are things that and I'm sure we'll talk about it, but there are things that I recognize that are not so great, but there are a lot of things that are enhanced more and more every time I see it. And I, I really enjoy uh, kind of this weird uh, self-commentary on the franchise that the, the film has, uh, which I think is needed because I feel like as fans, as people that like this series, we like to put our blinders on and we like to go forward into the abyss uh, because it's Star Wars and we like to support it all, the whole way. But honestly, I think sometimes uh, you need to step back and... Uh, take a look at what you're really, really watching, you know, critically. Anyway, that's my thought. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Uh, okay. Now, Dom, uh, your, your thoughts, your impressions when you first saw this movie and how you felt about it. Um, well, when I first saw it, I loved it a lot. Mm -hmm. And then since then, seeing all the backlash has only made me like it more. And now I'm confident to say that it's my favorite film of the whole franchise. Wow. Wow. And I that's... think, uh, which is so interesting that you. I think I probably, from what I've heard so far, I think I I probably like this film the most out of all of us. And I think for the yeah. reasons that you hate it, it sounds like are the reasons that I like it. That it, uh, what it does for the franchise is what I love about it. Mm -hmm. Similar to what Andy's saying, that. Um, for a franchise as old as this to continue, I feel like it needs like a fresh coat of paint and it needs some sustainable ideas that it can thrive on for, you know, you know, in years forward. So the things that Ryan Johnson did to update it, um, I think are going to be the sustainable factors for the franchise moving forward. And especially because JJ Abrams was able to bring it back to life 
and uh, that's about it. So he brought it back to life. Brian Johnson reinvigorated it for the modern era. That was my take. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. A lot to process there. So, uh, Keith, we what? really picked the two, the four <laughs> best people for this pod, for this episode. I must say, <laughs> from an, like yeah. on each end of the spectrum, like mm-hmm. I must say, we uh, thank you guys for being our friends. Like, <laughs> and uh, you know, yeah. thank you for throwing stones. This makes for great podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, you know, you guys. Um, I really appreciate you guys have very strong opinions about this, and I guess we'll bring up some of our concerns to you guys, maybe to defend against, and maybe yes, you, know, so you guys will bring up, you know, to so team critics will bring up, you know, maybe some things we didn't like you can defend against, and team audience will bring up some things that we did like that maybe you can knock down. Um, so, um, Keith, I know you prepared some questions. Yeah. So, like, what, what are your what are your like um, you know initial questions for our teams here? Uh, well, you know, there's the general, like, about structure, about pacing, about mm-hmm. characters, and uh, I'll go, as I said, there, with this rewatch, it kind of solidifies mm-hmm. what I really like about it and what I really don't like about it, so, and I'm going to start with the, with Andy and Dom. Mm-hmm. Did you feel that this movie felt its time? Did, was, did you, did this movie feel it's two and a half hours, or was the pacing all right by you guys? I'll start with the a simple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we need like a system of like signals. Like yeah. I never had an issue with the pacing in the film. I think the first like twenty minutes of the film are kind of choppy, and then once mm-hmm. it kind of gets going, I uh, I mm-hmm. felt like it goes pretty fast. Okay. Yeah. I um yeah pacing is tough, especially with Star Wars, because like the first time you see it, it kind of flies by. Like no matter if it's like that or not, it's just kind of like you know you're there. It's like an event. Yeah. Um, but watching it again, um, yeah, I, I would say, uh, yeah, the, the beginning does stumble a little bit to like kind of set up where the film is gonna go, and as a consequence, like I would say maybe the latter half of the middle, right before the climax of the film picks up, is like also a little clunky because it's it's so much going on and such like weird divergent plot lines that it it kind of finds a weird way to come, come together at the end. But I think that, um, in terms of how it deals with like the overall character arcs in general, uh, the pacing feels pretty, pretty good throughout. Yeah. I think I'll say this. Um, I think that up to the, like the two hour mark, I wasn't feeling the time. I feel like Ed, like when things are building up and all these storylines are dovetailing, I really was feeling like, you know, into it and you have the climax where, you know, everything kind of pays off at once, mm-hmm. you know, you kill off Snoke and then they ram the one ship into the other ship and, you know, you get all this resolve. But then the film kept going. Mm -hmm. And for me, that last 30 minutes felt like I had been watching a movie for over two hours. Mm -hmm. And I really wish that they kind of ended on a high note because I feel like that last battle scene to me feels very disjointed from the rest of the movie. And it almost feels like um, they just were doing too much at that point Mm -hmm. Uh, for a movie that already had like these three storylines that were all kind of going on and jumping around so much. And for, you know, at one point I was like, you hit it, you dovetailed it all. And now, you know, you can maybe wrap it up, but then to keep going again after that, I, I did kind of get a little impatient towards the end. I will, I will say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So hopefully you can understand where I'm coming from. Not, you know, tear me apart for that opinion. Oh, we're all here to listen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James, Heather, what do you what do you think about that? Um, personally, I always felt that Star Wars was a character driven story, character driven movies. Um, you know, the plot even of the older trilogy, not so much the the new trilogy, I guess the episode one through three, but definitely four through six. Uh, fairly simple plots. You know, you can very kind of almost like archetypal plots about you know. Bad Empire, Rebel Group, you know, good versus evil, heroism, loyalty, all that stuff. Get it. Um, But it was driven by the characters. And I find the characters of this new trilogy, particularly in this movie, Lost Jedi, to be so weak that everything felt like it was taking forever because I didn't understand 
why these characters were doing what they're doing, why they were going on the quest that they were, not so much the why they were doing, but why they felt they had to do it. You know, what was like their personal character motivations? Um, and I think that's maybe just a flaw of like the Disney Star Wars era, not really establishing these characters and who they are and what their motivations are, like why they're doing the things that they're doing outside of like, oh, the Empire bad, you know, gotta fight evil. Like, I get that. But because I'm not invested in any of these characters, I had a hard time, like, really, it just made everything drag for me because mm -hmm. I just felt like, like, why are we going here? Like, why are we doing this? Like, what is motivating you to do this? And I feel like those are the questions that were coming up with me the whole time. And it just kind of took me out of it and I guess made the film seem like it was taking a long time. Um, okay. Well, uh, I think, yeah, we'll get to Heather on what she thinks about the pacing. And then I think from your point, we'll maybe get into some of these characters then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good transition. But okay, Heather, so what are your thoughts on that? So, yes and, right? Mm -hmm. So I agree. And then also somehow the pacing also felt like it was jumping too fast. So, like, I feel like I'm sitting in this movie for a million years. But then also we're jerking back and forth. Like, I'm thinking specifically about when... Ray's on the island, right? And now we're like, she's having these like dream force voodoo sequences, right? And she's going back and forth and she's finding out stuff from Ben and she's finding out stuff from Luke about like why the two of them have their falling out. And it's like, dun, dun, dun. Luke was the problem. Okay. Two seconds later, dun, dun, dun. Actually, Ben was the problem. Okay. Two more seconds. And then dun, dun, dun. Actually, it's like, holy shit, like, let me sit with it for a second mm -hmm. before we move on to the next big reveal. Like, you don't need six big reveals right in a row. And, like, I'm sorry, but casino nonsense is not a good enough buffer. Like, not that those things are, like, exactly on top of each other, but, but like, it just didn't feel like it made sense logically. Like, if you're going to have six big reveals like that, make that over the course of the movie and make me care about the characters and do it in that kind of a way. But I feel like they were, like, simultaneously shoving way too much into a movie and then also dragging shit out that didn't make any sense and didn't belong there. Okay. Um, well, do you guys have one last rebuttal to any of that before we move on? <laughs> Is that allowed? <laughs> <laughs> our, podcast, of being down the uh, our podcasts are rules so you know um, give you a chance to respond um, to that the podcast for uh, might, <laughs> might just I, I, I feel like I have a rebuttal but I feel like it can come with the next topic if okay. we're going to sure. talk about the characters because I think it relates to that if we're talking about pacing we've been talking a lot about how it deals with the character arcs so gotcha, yeah, yeah, gotcha. I think it'll come with that okay so with that being said um, you know these characters most of them were introduced in uh, you know, The Force Awakens, you know, Britt coming back is Rey, um, Finn, then, you know, Leia, obviously, like, the longest lasting character, I guess, up to this point. We we get to see Luke again after him not being in the previous movie. And then they also introduce Rose, who is a new character in this movie. Um, and then those are, like, your main players. Yeah, purple hair. Paul, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Paul. Oh, wait, oh, yeah. Poe. Oh, yeah. Poe came back. Poe came back. Right, you also have Poe, who can't, comes back as well. And Lily and Fafa. Uh, <laughs> you got Porgs now. Okay, <laughs> that's like fair. Porgs. Yeah, so, no, um, there. You know, some of these characters were established in the first movie, so you know, it kind of depends on, I guess, maybe how you felt about them in the first movie that carries over to this second movie in the trilogy. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, these characters all kind of go their separate ways, and um, you know, do you think that each character was given, like, you know, the things you want to see in a movie, like enough to do, enough development, less learning a lesson, and, you know, being able to be rooted for, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, James, from what it sounds like for you, no. But did you like some of these characters in the previous movie? And if so, why not so this time? Mm -hmm. I liked the idea of these characters in the previous movie. I, I, felt, like there, I felt like there was a cool setup. Um, Ray was like, okay, it could be endless possibilities. Like, mm -hmm. is she maybe the son of this or the descendant of that or maybe even not? Like, it was cool. Like, I feel like there was a lot of mystery around her. Um, so there was like, she also had like a lot of force strength, which, you know, that could have been something interesting. Um, and I'm really not upset that like, oh, she's, apparently supposedly according to this movie that like oh she's not descended from anyone her parents are just junkers that's actually not what really bothered me okay. um what bothered me is that like i don't understand like again why ray is doing this because i'm assuming ray wants answers about the force maybe maybe not so much about like how where she came from but at least like where are these force powers coming from and like how do I have this and how do I fit in? But like, I don't really get what like really compels her to be battling this hard to put her life on the line to, 
you know, she feels a connection to Kylo Ren. I feel like just, things are just sort of like happening. And like Ray's just sort of like, okay, I guess this is where like the plot is having me go next. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't understand like what Ray wants. I don't understand what Ray wants. I don't understand like what, how she grows at all. I feel like in The Force Awakens, it was just like, it could have been anything. And then like, mm-hmm. it just feel like it kind of, she didn't really change at all okay. in, in The Last Jedi, can as I, far as I can say. Can I add to that? And that's just Rey. Like, I feel like I go every well, day. Yeah. And she's like the least offensive to me. Okay. Because she didn't really have a lot to go. I feel like yeah. there wasn't a lot to build on there. Like, it could have been anything. Well, then uh, maybe um, let's tackle, like, Rey and then some of these other yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah. And, like, what, what do you feel about that? Well, I just wanted to add that I felt that in The Force Awakens, you actually got more of her motivation than right. this one. Because you hear, like, she had, she had talking about, like, the lore of Luke Skywalker and the lore of, you know, Han Solo and Millennium, oh, this is the Millennium Falcon, whoa! Like, she had all of this, like, to go off of, and then all of a sudden in this movie, it was just kind of like, well, now I'm here, so I guess I'm going to do it. And also, I have a weird connection to this guy that I have no reason to have a connection to. Right. Like, it kind of feels like it comes out of absolutely A nowhere. connection with Kylo, Kylo Ren? Okay. Um, and even like Leia, like Leia's like, oh, Ray, so happy to see you. And I'm like, why? Uh, like, you guys don't yeah. know. You are not friends. <laughs> like, like, she did I, that with Holdo. Uh, it's like, hey, I'm happy we're friends for all these years. And I said, oh, you, who, who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah, like, superimpose her into some of the older movies so that I feel like she matters. Uh, that's that's, a, that's another, Laura Dern in our challenge. Yeah, like, yeah, I like yeah. that it was Laura Dern. I, I, wish, they, I wish they had Holdo in um, Force Awakens just so uh, it her impact into the plot would have been more effective, yeah. but we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, Ray, I guess, yeah, she's the she's the main character, right? Like, she's, like, I guess the one that um, is, like, the sort of um, character who's, like, destined to be whatever it is that they eventually decide we'll mm-hmm. find out in the, in the third movie. So, you know, what what is your rebuttal to that? Like, do you think you guys connect with Ray and, you know, who's, how she's growing and what motivates her? Yeah. You want to find her? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I've i always seen Rey since The Force Awakens as uh, the audience. Uh, this is a character, like, it was funny, like, when Force Awakens came out, and you know it's been, like, however many years since the original trilogy, um, and that's what people were yearning for, right? You know, they went through, like, this trial and error of the prequels, like, I hope the next one will be good, well, I hope the one after that one will be good. <laughs> And then Force Awakens come out, and here's a character who's like, Luke Skywalker? I thought he was just a myth. Like, this one who's like heard about all these legends and like she her identity of herself is kind of like nobody but she she fantasizes herself as these things that she's heard about she wants to be on an adventure she wants to you know find out who her parents are like what she comes from and uh you know i i think it's interesting how in the first film it's kind of like all these things are coming true to her like she's actually part of an adventure she's making a difference she finds out that she's indeed special when she finds out she can use the force. Mm-hmm. And what I love so much about her journey in this next film, and it's kind of like that metal line that Luke Skywalker has, uh, like towards the end of the film where he's like, you have no idea how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's him talking to the audience again. And, it, and it's kind of this idea that Ray, you know, we're led to believe like, you know, this protagonist has a journey of self discovery and it's always going to be like the next thing that'll bring them closer to like this grand idea of heroism. I'm going to bring this, the bad guy back to, the light side, because that's what Luke Skywalker did with his own father, because there was still some good in him. And the hard lesson I feel like that she learns is that it's not about achieving this this unattainable idea because you're inherently just a good person. It's about just fighting for it and, and just just trying. And, and, and even if you're not somebody, um, and that's kind of what Kyle Ren tries to play into at the end, it says you're not anybody He's like, you're not anybody, but you're not nobody to me. Mm-hmm. So he kind of like, he's trying to like tap into that. And she knows that's like the wrong idea. So I, I, I love that they're, you know, what seems like kind of an underdeveloped character is one that is playing with our own idea of the audience of how like adventure should be for our heroes and for ourselves through this vicarious experience. Okay. Um, so I, I, I identify her as a very, very intricately made vessel for people to like watch the movie through. Um, okay. Uh, even though I, I will agree that, like, I, I wanted to see I, – right now she seems kind of like a weird, like, Jesus figure. Like, it's, it's mm. kind of like she's almost a little too pure. Um, I, I want, like, a little bit more, like, conflict. Like, if she has, like – and they kind of hint at that a little bit. Like, like Luke says, like, you're reaching too much out for the dark side. Right. And I was like, ooh, is she going to go bad? Like, I hope, like, in the next movie – 
there's maybe a little bit more of that. But as it stands now, I, I like that her arc kind of details her own experience through the story and learning what being like a hero is and okay. all that. Yeah. What do you think, Don? Um, well, like, for all the heroes, like, in the franchise, like, the, uh, asking the question, like, why are they doing what they're doing? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, why does, like, Luke Skywalker do and New Hope why does he do anything? I mean, I'm confused as to why is the motivation of him in those films any more clear than Ray in, in these films? Can I answer that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, um, what do you think? I think because not only was his father supposedly killed by the Imperial forces, but also his aunt and uncle were killed by the Imperial forces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He also meets this old man who's been more or less like this weird old man, but also a mentor to him, <laughs> telling him, hey, like, there's some things that you can do that maybe you can help and avenge these people. And I think mm-hmm. that's why he did it, whereas Ray didn't have any of that. So yeah, Ray found the, a robot in the sand. Like That's true. The family thing, I think, is the thing that people get, like... Uh, Latch, they latch on to in Star Wars because Star Wars is always about like fathers and bloodlines and yeah and lineage and that's part of why I like Rey so much because I feel like she kind of liberates the franchise from being like you know it's not if it, it's like a uh, it's a wholesome idea that like you don't have to be this special son of some like special yeah. king or something you can just be a normal person who like cares about and she wants that she wants that so much too it's like you you know when when Kyle Ren is like I look at your future there's nobody which like let's be honest like in this next movie they're probably gonna reveal something about her Uh, but in that moment in the context of the film you can feel that disappointment like through yourself and like through her it's like Mm -hmm. oh I'm not like Mm-hmm. Like Han Solo's daughter or like Luke's right. granddaughter. Which is something that's yeah. hard to reckon with if you're yeah. a fan of the franchise. But yeah. it's a question of whether you're willing to like keep going. Let it go or yeah. if you want it to yeah. be about like bloodlines. I think I have, to, yeah. I have to say I do like the idea of her being a no one. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that I think is kind of an interesting answer to, you know, the big riddle that the first movie sets up. And I would be very disappointed if that becomes undone in the rise of skywalker I, yeah I, I think if they want to keep this character kind of going on her track then it it, it would really be bad if they yeah. revealed something else to her because then it's like it, it it adds to the fact like oh she's gonna keep like the legacy going and it's like if she's nobody then there's more of a risk of her like dying in the next movie like making yeah. the sacrifice play like that is more interesting and complex to me it's almost like she's just a force of nature mm-hmm. than, like an actual but, like han solo you know? was a nobody mm-hmm. What do, you like, mean, what do you mean, like, so like that works to our point? No, it? no. <laughs> you're saying that everybody in the... You're like, well, you know, you're saying uh, that... Han Solo's right. not the main character, though. No, it's but, fine. like, in a lot of ways, he's more interesting to watch. And, like, in some ways, Ray's not... Like, she is the main character, but, like, it's arguable that Kyle Ren is the, is the fucking main character of these movies. Yeah. He gets more screen time. Like, he's, you know, and he's, like, the character yeah, that you're really she, following his arm. He's the protagonist. He's the antagonist. Right, but, yeah. like... That's what I mean. Like, I'm not no, saying... No, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. But, like, I'm just saying, like, you know, if you, also, if you look at, like, the original trilogy, like, Han Solo has a bigger arc mm-hmm. than Luke Skywalker. Like, you know, so like I, would say, I would say it's dissimilar, though, because Luke goes in a way where he, you know, obviously learns more about his family history, and that makes him more wise and more, you know, he grows sure. up. Han Solo grows up more, like, emotionally. Like, he, he becomes... Yeah, becomes more loyal, more selfless, less, yeah, like less interested yeah. in his own well-being. You mm-hmm. know, like yeah. I have to say, I think that Ray you know, doesn't do much in Return of the Jedi, but that's. <laughs> if we're talking about whether or not yeah, people should be so. motivated, like not should, but like could be motivated to be a part of the fight or to join up or to do any of this, um, yeah. like, you get your Chewie, you get your Han Solo. Like, there's people in Chewie criminally, criminally underused. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, yeah. he's a set piece. He's a set piece. He's yeah, you can't have had enough Chewie. He's there to play with the porks, and that's about it. Yeah, that is that. R two is, is, you know. is basically in the corner. Yeah. Uh, so that, well, okay. Can we, can we say that too? Like, as much as I love Chewbacca, I do want him to do more. I do like that 
if anything, this series is focusing more on what they can do with different characters rather than just okay. being like, oh, R2-D2's dick can right. fix anything. But I, like, that's, 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 that's BB-8's dick. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. It's just, I just feel like they're failing in that regard. Actually, that, and yeah. I, you know, in a lot of ways, I really do like that Ray is a nobody because... Weirdly enough, it almost like kind of ties back to Anakin. It was just like, oh, he just kind of came out of nowhere. It's a you know what I mean? Anakin. Yeah, he, he is it a was better Anakin. Kind of like you know? better. And I'm okay with that. I just think like the execution of all these ideas, I think, aren't playing out in a way that's yeah. enjoyable to watch. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. That's, okay. that's kind well, of the ending feeling. of uh, Last Jedi kind of solidifies your point of like when the kid grabbed, like you know, just oh, casually yeah, grabs yeah. the broom streak. Anyone could be uh, a, have these, the force in them. If you're trying to sell toys, it makes sense. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 One of the uh, the whole other beast. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I I agree with you that like it's nice to have Chewbacca and R two D two and C three PO and but. I always thought that Ryan Johnson, there were some characters from Force Awakens that he did not care for. Yeah, he really kind sure. of sidelines I, not, Phasma. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, Phasma. 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 Okay. Yeah. There's a Lupita Nyong'o character. She sucks. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, Okay, so like... And Ryan right? Johnson realized that and just was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was this the eye lady? The love eye? Yeah. 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 We know yeah. better yeah. problems. I'll say this. I'm not one to like always have like loose ends tied up, but like we better find out how she got that fucking lightsaber that fell down a shaft yes. and, yeah. into yes. a yes. Nimbus yeah, yeah, yeah. cloud of planets. Hey, <laughs> that could be me. She, when she literally said when Hustle was like, where did you get on that? And she was just like, that's a story for another time. I was like, get the fuck. Yeah. That would be a different <laughs> movie. Like, like, we have mystery box. That was basically yeah. the way yeah. of saying, oh like, God. we haven't written that yet. Right. Um, but it'll be a series on Disney Plus. She, she like, had her fishing line out, like, in the best fin, just like, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, that, that could be an interesting sequence, maybe to open the next movie. Is maybe like that just the be. falling lightsaber. Well, you know, and that was the rumor of how Force Awakens was going to start with Luke's uh, uh, hand flowing through space, clutching the lightsaber. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that maybe that could have been that rumored for like the so year long. leading up to Force Awakens. Well, I know that J.J. Abrams wrote like drafts for. The Last Jedi and Ryan Johnson did his own thing, and and that's a question for later in the conversation. But I just I, that'd be awesome. I thought Phasma to me like it's a tragic waste of Brianna Tarth. Like, Thank you. I, the, but I yeah, that, that she is great. important to Finn. Exactly, it's not Phasma. It's Phasma and Finn, Finn that yeah. got yeah. dropped. And yeah. I want I think it's a now good time to move to Finn. Well, here's the thing, actually, the way I kind of wanted to you know uh, shift this a little bit and. Um, you know, I want to keep this as our, our organic as possible, but um, I would say, you know, Ray. My my last thoughts on Ray would be this: I think that the first movie set up someone who has a lot of potential, not just to like be more powerful, but to be, I guess, like developed and to have more personality later. She's kind of like a blank slate in the beginning, and I feel like yeah. the second movie is still playing that note of she has all this potential. And it's like, well, I feel like we should be transitioning That's, now to the next part of that. Yeah. By but by, I feel like by the end of the first movie, or by the end of the second movie, now we only get kind of like a hint of that, and I feel like we're a little behind on seeing like that full potential become realized. I will yeah. say though, I think of the three main storylines, the for me, the Ray, uh, Luke and uh, Kylo storyline is the strongest part of yeah. the movie yeah, for I me. What ha- what happens like, on that island the and storyline. Right. And I I liked all the stuff with like her and Kylo being like mentally connected. I thought those were really interesting kinds of scenes. I've never really seen in another movie where two characters are just in two different scenes and they're like talking to each other and I I was intrigued. Oh, I, thought I, that was I, I think too. what filmmaking I think what yeah. made it a little more stronger for me though is that because um, again, we're talking about her being a little bit of a blank slate. I think if there was more, because so much of it is like her conflict with sympathizing with him, which is interesting. But then it's like maybe he, if he played a little bit more into her darker sensibilities, like the, mm-hmm. like you know, kind of like the Darth Vader tempting thing, like give in to your anger. Like, aren't you pissed off at people like yeah. leaving you alone for all these years? Like, there's not a lot of that in Last Jedi, it's just her kind of like feeling sorry for him. If anything, she gets mad at him, because she's like, yeah. why would you kill your father? Because she never had a father, and so maybe, you know, Kylo could have taken advantage of her rage at him. Yeah. You know, and I think I, that's the best payoff for me, too, that scene where they kill Snoke, and they have that battle scene, I that thought was that so was awesome. my favorite, favorite, favorite part of the movie. movie. I would agree. And uh, that was a really great move to kill off that character in a way that I thought also yeah. was, you know, really interesting for Kylo. I like I like Kylo a lot in these. Yeah, I would I would say he's probably the most like 
interestingly written character in a, in a Star Wars movie. There's usually not a lot of like mm-hmm. huge character yeah, conflict yeah. going on in like a Star Wars movie, and that is very interesting. Yeah. What do you guys think? He's also um, in the ass though. He's very frustrating to watch. What do you mean, Adam Driver? (laughs) Well, that's two separate problems. Adam Driver is sometimes frustrating to watch, but also... You like Adam Driver? He's all right. Wow. Also, him shirtless, like, he's a very wide man. He's very cozy. He's scary. We all, we all saw the barrel memes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but, yeah. but, um, he gets the bench. <laughs> but, um, like, he, like, his outbursts and shit and it's just kind of like a he's little like a child. Un- I know yeah, but he's it's, a skywalker but yeah. it's like a that's, little un- they all, they all he's not in control of his own well, that's, that's why I yeah. think it would be better to play into the fact that Kyle did it yeah. he's a skywalker that's why I think they need to like play like two sides of the same coin more with Ray and Ren because Kyle Ren is like this petulant child like he he always wants what he can't get and that's, that's like exactly he wants like Luke vengeance. Is. Yeah, but Ray is like this weird like Zen kind of like patience and like mm-hmm. goodness and like they, they need to like have more of that tugging back and forth of like you know kind of this like morality and like emotionality going on because it, it's more just like their connection now, you know, so rather than like anything else. We brought it up a few times and we can table it, but I don't. I want to make sure it doesn't get lost or forgotten. Mm-hmm. But this is a way that we're seeing the force being used that's just completely like out of left field. Like, oh, yeah. the force can do yeah. this now. In that's addition true. to, oh, the force can bring people back to the dead. So the dead. That's not even talking about how, what hyperdrives can do now. Right, like, like, that's new. Well, that's, okay, but some things yeah, like the force connection so, thing is 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 actually a canon thing. Yeah, that's an empire. Force connect the, the talking. I'm not too. It for me. It's the I'm flying back into the spaceship from outer space. The, yeah. the Mary Poppins. That, that, the Mary, Leia Mary Poppins. Well, that nice. okay. Yeah. Definitely yeah. one of the more divisive moments of the movie. Yeah. And it's bizarre. You know, the theory, the idea yeah. behind it is yeah. nice, but it does come off. But also, when the did she is very like good. train in the Force so well that she'd be able to use it in that I way? Think anyway. We're gonna find out in the next movie, hopefully. Well, I don't know. Hopefully, you know, as she's in it, she popped up in the trailer. They well, yeah, but like, they, how much could they have shot? I also her? argue maybe not a completely even necessary moment because they only blow up the bridge just so you can see Leia do that, right? Yeah, and nothing and really changes. And they yeah. kill, outside of they do kill Akbar. Well, it's also their show. It shows that, it's yeah. that it's, uh, Kyle Ren is still not right. willing to fully, yeah, yeah. and then it leads to that next thing. Well, he knew she was in there. Yeah, he doesn't pull the trigger. They were doing that really good match shot. Okay. Yeah, show, knows. that's why his arc in that movie is the best because it's, you know, you're you're kind of teased into the fact that, oh, maybe he can be turned because he's still got yeah. some good in him. But his right. arc is about becoming the villain he's because really- he goes from having that that good conflict in him to finally just letting go and being like, I don't give a shit about any of you What's anymore. Like, well, like, to, like uh, in terms of one of the themes of this is he's, and he says it the most of all is let the past die yeah do you think that, that is uh i go back and forth on how i feel about this theme and how it's executed Fuck you, i think that, <laughs> no, 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 like because i don't think he lets the past die and part of me is going now like it's either uh, badly he doesn't stick the landing or is that intended to not stick he was the willing to kill his mother at the end he was like don't leave any survivors in that base he knows she's in there uh, but in terms of the movie itself playing the past die, I think that, that I think Disney's talking out of both sides of the mouth with that one because yeah. I feel like oh yeah like forget all this old all, all the old stuff that you like in this movie like we're getting rid of it like okay like the you lightsaber with Luke like that's not important um, Akbar he's dead um, you know like oh everyone Akbar, that was from those old just, movies they're dying yeah. they're getting rid of it but at the same time we're gonna like take a lot of like same things from the old me like oh it's not an ice plant it's a salt plant you know the same thing we're gonna do that you, mean, you know like, like oh salt, my god yeah. that's so funny because yeah. I feel like they take when like they taste oh the salt. that joke was dumb yeah like I feel like oh you know it's almost like they take the same setup from those old movies like the way that like, they're they're um the plots are organized and they use them again, but at the same time they're saying let the past okay. die. Here's my complaint about that though, mm-hmm. is that we've had people for years being like, I want old Star Wars back, mm-hmm. I want this, 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 this. And then Force Awakens come out. Force oh my god, grammar. Uh, Force Awakens comes out. Everyone's like, it's too much like a new exactly. hope. Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you in the new one? It's not want. Enough. like no, what? I, I, no, that's no, the, okay, no, 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 that's not the point I want to make. Yeah. That, like he, throughout the movie, he go, he keeps t- telling Ray, let the past die. Kill uh, screw the first order. Screw the resistance. I'm all for that. 
And then in that last half hour, he's like, I am the supreme leader well, of the first he's about order. To leave in his no, own, he is in, the leader. No, of he the, says the Jedi and the Sith. He doesn't say the first order. That's part. still the path. Like, I feel like, but part of me go, is thinking, like, maybe Ryan Johnson is thinking that he's not immature enough to capture that theme. And now I'm thinking maybe I'm overthinking Ryan Johnson. I think, is thinking that. Like, I just, I think it's kind of bungled. Well, personally. I think it's just because, like, again, like in the, in the beginning of the film, we're shown that, like, obviously he still feels for his own mother. Then by the end of it, you know, when it shows how he's able to just kill this master of his that he tr- he's trusted so much of his life to at this point, he finally has that realization that he's like, yeah, I can do this on my own. Like, okay. let the past die. Stop letting these people tell you what to do. Stop being tethered to their ideals. Okay. Well, I think if you really important. wanted, yeah, and if we really want to address that, um, we got to talk about Luke. Yeah. Can we, let's, I feel like it's a big topic. Mm-hmm. Can we go back to Finn real quick? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll Look, get to the Just like the movie. Can we go back to Finn real quick? <laughs> All right. Um, I, I'm like, oh, yeah, Finn's this movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gavel. I, we'll add a gavel sound effect. So, <laughs> um, I, that's I, 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 that's I, patented by uh, Judge Judy. Though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is not small claims court. So, <laughs> oh, by the way, I will say track points from team critics for bad grammar. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, um, that's any, only fair. Anyways, uh, I think people who like or dislike this movie for the most part agree that the Casino Planet Finn Rose storyline is the weakest part of this movie. Mm-hmm. And um, that's all I Just would say I mean, you need to give, you know, they, had, they, they maybe can argue that Finn was not given enough to do, and they give him this storyline. I would say my biggest issue with this storyline is that a casino planet <laughs> is not very... <laughs> a casino planet, to me, is not very creative. And yeah. I find it odd that they play craps in Star Wars. Well, okay. <laughs> it's, 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 there's a cantina right there. There's, there's, there's ice in this, uh, Han Solo's... Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, but it's too, like... What do people do in this galaxy? They can do anything. They're um, they're in a, I just I, I wish they had something a little more interesting than a casino with rich people. I just thought that like yeah, it's you know, the nose. Uh, like a Las yeah. Vegas in this galaxy. I you know I'm all for like going to like a place where like rich people are you know living in excess, and that's mm-hmm. off the off yeah. the backs of a lot of people who died. A Dubai planet. <laughs> <laughs> We're fucking, what's his, uh, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum is in charge. Uh, yeah. That's what I want. Here's, here's my thing. It's, it's like the casino, it's like, it's wonderfully weird. Like I'm okay with them, like getting as weird as they want with it. And like, I have no problem with it being a casino planet. My problem is that anytime Star Wars has tried to politicize anything in its own narrative to give incentive to character motiva- motivations, it falls flat on its face. Short of like, you know, the obvious allegories where it's like, you know, the empires like fascism and like all this, you know, oppressive stuff like oppression is easy for people to understand. Mm -hmm. Uh, Putting in like kind of like an Occupy Wall Street kind of thing in Star Wars is like, is weird because I like, I just think that's, I don't know because I (laughs) read the animals, leave the dreams. It's it's like, it's always been extremely political. Yeah, but it's dark. But it's very, I think it's been like more subtext than like Star Wars. As overt. It's It's very universal. Like freedom, good. Oppression, bad. Everything in this, I mean, like the Ewoks, this, that's like, it's representation of Vietnam. I mean, and that Lucas is like a hippie and they're all like raggedy hippies. Oh, come on. Wait, like Vietnam? I do remember when the Vietnam. Like, he's saying, yum, like, yum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Luke doesn't even, like, fight in Vietnam. Like, he, or Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> Luke doesn't even Luke fight, fight in Vietnam. Vietnam. On, uh, oh, no, he goes up to the Death Star. He's on Endo for a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, but then he, yeah, then he goes away. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going all Star Wars <laughs> in the movie. He's like, I'm going to go talk to my dad. He's like, what the hell? You can fucking push things with your mind. We need yeah. you down here. Like, <laughs> like, read about Ewoks in Vietnam. It's all in there. All right, all right. That is a discussion for another day. Don't divide us, please. <laughs> the team critics have divided themselves. Yeah, just like Return of the Jedi. Finn's <laughs> character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Finn's character. character. I feel like in The Force Awakens, he was the most interesting one. Yeah, he, I, was, up he, there, yeah. he yeah. was like, oh, wow, a stormtrooper or whatever, a neo yeah. stormtrooper that turned against stormtroopers because why? Who knows? Probably one of the best ideas, of yeah. original ideas from the first movie. Yeah. He had his conflicts. Wow, he's like superior, like pointing him out. Like, okay, they obviously have a beef. He probably was like a, wasn't he like a janitor or he's, something? Yeah. yeah. Was, well, he said yeah. sanitation. He's like, like, he says in the movie that he spent his whole life kind of following like the ideas and doctrines, believing in them. And yeah. then when he was faced with the first time, which was 
the first scene. Yeah. That's like his first mission. He said the first time I ever actually had to do it, I like I saw what it really was. Like you know, they're massacring people. That's why people yeah. fell in love with that character. But I think yeah. it could have been something great. Like I would have. I felt like they were almost like building up for like mm -hmm. the the clash that he's going to have with Phasma, and like it was almost going to be sort of like thematic in his character arc, like him yeah. overcoming like his own doubts and like finding his reason yeah. to do things would give him the strength. I guess basically like, overcome, I guess what Phasma would be in that situation. It didn't really turn out that way, and I feel like they're kind of just having, like, I'm not really sure why he's joining the Resistance outside of, like, he met Rey at that time, and I'm like, so why are you still there? Like, and what's this deal with, like, this non-chemistry relationship you have with Rose Tico now? Uh, well, that's a whole other and I just feel like, yeah. I feel like they almost are obligated to keep him in the story, so he's in the story, whereas I feel like they don't really have him written in in any way that's significant. I would say, if anything, um, he always, to me, seemed like he was more motivated by his loyalty to Rey than maybe yeah, by the yeah. mission of the Resistance. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, now he's just kind of full... Everything he... They should maybe remind us everything he's doing is for Rey. Mm -hmm. um, and Poe. And, oh, that's true. Him and Poe... Um, He's willing to ditch Poe, though, in the beginning of the movie. He's like, sitting yeah. there, like, oh, yeah. man. He's like, he's like, he's like, pretty hard for Poe. No, he doesn't. He says, where's Ray? And then he tries to sneak off on In such pod. a goofy way. Oh, in that part, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Water, so <laughs> like, yeah, he's like tiptoeing out of there. Yeah. So, one quick question. and you, mm. Did you guys think this movie was funny? The, the humor no. for this one. Uh, no, the, no when, when it tried to be funny, they tried the normal humor and it didn't work. Oh, it didn't I got work. so angry. I haven't, I it haven't made been been the chuckle of times, joy but... since I was 10, so I've never <laughs> thought that like, okay. a Star Wars or a Marvel movie has ever been funny. Yeah, okay. okay. Thor Ragnarok okay. okay. is a comedic joy. Okay. I like the okay. boards. I like the nuns on the. I like the boards and nuns. I'm with you. Yeah. Boards and nuns. I'm sorry. But Luke Skywalker throwing his fucking legs over over his shoulder. Oh, I like that. Can I say this? Order, order. Not that. Okay, okay. okay. I'll I got say one this. thing to say about Finn before we move on. Mm. Okay, sure, sure. Finn. Just to let that out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to talk about yes. Finn. Finn. Oh, uh, the, <laughs> watching it this time, that throwing the lightsaber, it didn't feel like a joke. It just felt like it. it oh, I don't know about that. I didn't. I didn't see the, yeah. the timing for Seriously. it to be a joke this time, and may, I, maybe there wasn't people around me chuckling or not laughing. It just. I was like, oh, we just throws it over. I'll say about that. <laughs> well, let's let's yeah, let's wrap up on Finn, and I want to touch up on like this humor, um, like style they're going we're for. Talking about alien tits. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. But uh, so, what, <laughs> what are your what are your thoughts on Finn? I just think with Finn, he was set up to fail. I mean, as a character, because J.J. Abrams is like so known to um, subvert fan expectations, and if you remember on the poster. Finn had the blue lightsaber. So we all mm. went into that film thinking, mm. is Finn going to be a Jedi? So I feel like Ryan Johnson was like set up to fail with this character who may or may not have just been there to subvert our expectation. Mm -hmm. that, so just at the last minute, we realized, well, oh, fucking J.J. Abrams is doing his J.J. Abrams thing. Yeah. Then the next movie starts, and, and I imagine the writers are like, well, what do we do with this character now? He was just there as yeah. a placeholder. Well, I mean, apparently, if they did throw out the like J.J. Abrams script for the second one, maybe there was something intended for him, and yeah, that got lost in the sauce, perhaps. Well, I, I didn't understand at the end... The two things for me was oh, sorry, Heather. Okay, no, finish. The two things for me is uh, I wish maybe they showed something about like maybe um, how Phasma abused him or why there's a beef there because it seemed like this is a showdown we've been waiting for, but I didn't get that. Um, and two, he's you know at the end he's willing to sacrifice himself. He wants to like drive his ship into like the cannon thing mm -hmm. to sacrifice himself. But I didn't really feel like that was sure. built up either. That he is like, it wasn't earned. 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 I, I, I might really bad, actually. Yeah. It just wasn't earned. That's well, so I, I agree. I, I, I think was saving earned. him was also not earned. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole other that, thing. That I didn't like. That I didn't like at all. But <laughs> what I was going to say about Finn and the movie that I wanted was PTSD of Finn like flashbacks of the conditioning or some kind of shit mm, for being yeah. a stormtrooper so that fun. we could really like get his beef with P uh, Phasma. I was going to call her Phasma. Um, Close enough. Get her. That's not get, so cooler. You know, I like, I was like, <laughs> yeah, where, like we had, there were so many different ways we could have gone with Finn to make me care that he's going against them to make me actually see what it's like to be on the dark side when you're not intentionally on the dark side. Yeah. Like I had so many, oh, I was so just excited like, for just turned him into like a goofball. He just, just had like, nothing to do. And like his mission ended up being fruitless anyway. Yeah, so like, oh, you didn't like the mission with Porky Pig? <laughs> 
Here's oh my god. Here's Benicio Del Toro. Del Toro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I found that to be a very strange that performance. Uh, that was a very strange performance. I, did, I found that kind of inconsistent. Um, and uh, with, like with the Rose character, because she is tied in, like it's like Finn and Rose's story. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you going to say one more thing? No, I was going to talk about Finn. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, I, um, I actually really like Finn's storyline in The Last Jedi because I, oh, okay. because I do, I, my, my problems with him from The Force Awakens are the same, uh, where it's like, okay, I understood his motivation was purely driven by Rey. Now with Rey out of the picture in this movie, yeah, at least movies. with them tied together, what, what does he have to do in this movie? Why is he still with the Resistance at this point? And honestly, like, I really like how it plays more with this idea of neutrality with Finn because Finn is, is very much a survivalist. Like he was willing to ditch in the force awakens. Yeah. Like we've been shown that, like he's very much jaded and like cynical based on the fact that he lived most of his life to a certain code of conduct mm-hmm. when he was shown how backwards that was. Now he's kind of just like, screw it. I'm going to run away. And he still, you know, it makes sense in the beginning of the film that he's still in that mindset. And I like that there's a character who is so emboldened and so impassioned by an ideal that it kind of takes her to drive him to the point. Um, and I like that there is the Benicio Del Toro character to show kind of like this uh, negative side of neutrality, how it's all very self-sufficient and just like, oh, that's good you point. know, look out for your own skin. Yeah. He's shown that. And then I think that his sacrifice at the end is earned because of that, because I feel like he finally realizes what he needs to do. That being said, I think he should have died at the end of the film. And I think oh. her saving him and then making it about the romance between the two is laughable. Well, like, I, I, I it goes in the background. <laughs> I literally, so that, I agree. that is my problem with this character is that they don't know how to just write him just as a character and not as someone who has character because he has like an, in, like obviously in the first one, there's that awkward thing where he's mm-hmm. like friend zoned by Ray. <laughs> and it's like, why is this happening? Like, she's clearly not interested in him at all. Yeah. Some like, people thought he had chemistry with Poe. Which, yeah. like, all right, I'd be down for that. I'd be down for that more than anything. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. If you're going to do that, great. Stick to it. Build it. Establish it. Right. Yeah. First, mm-hmm. and then build it. And then, and, and especially with Rose, like, obviously, like, there's, like, a thing in the beginning you can kind of tell she's, like, attracted to him, but then they kind of just abandon that a yeah. little bit. There's not a lot of moments of chemistry between them. Well, I think and that's the, the thing. She loves him. And I can buy that. I don't think he's into her. But and I don't know if we're supposed to believe that he is. But even still, like, I feel but, like... But, but there's more moments of her just yeah. being like, ah, oh, like, we got to free the animals. It's like they're on the casino planet. They're dealing with this. There's not enough of, like, oh, he's not getting that she's into him I see, like, I see it. like there's, okay. there's there's no moments to like wink at the audience with that and it's just like her saving him at the end I'm like what like what if he just died and then like they show like how you know distraught she was and it's like oh my gosh she like really like cares she just lost her time. sister and then she just lost like, this guy too yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that would have been an interesting thing for her character and then she can kind of take the reins mm-hmm. from his like absence in the next yeah. one instead they, you know, oh that would be interesting I, just, I yeah. like the Rose character I like I like, they, I like how they set her up you know her sister dying in the beginning yeah, that's a great that was, yeah. it was a great setup yeah. I, yeah. that follow through I get her motivations if anything because yeah she is like you know to Finn you're abandoning us you know my sister and other people have died and you're just going to abandon us I kind of yeah. got maybe her motivation was becoming that sacrifice that he was uh, never willing to do but well, now all had to have them. You were in those. Love. You were in those bad grammar points right back with that argument. So, uh, so that you. I think it's time we go. I'm saying I liked the arc, it just didn't, you know, stick the landing. That's all. Okay. I think it's time we go on to the big gun of big Luke boy. Skywalker. Oh, Luke. Boy. Mm. Uh, my favorite character in this movie. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. why, why do we just <laughs> take everything we yeah. know about Luke Skywalker and throw it in the trash? You should have a white suit up outside. Yeah. I, Actually, my uh, my question goes <laughs> to the, the people that didn't like it. I actually did kind of. I could see Luke becoming this kind of person through, and with the setup, the prequels, whether you like them or not, are canon. Right. I you can point out the flaws that the Jedi did, and obviously Luke did. I did kind of. I say, like, oh, he's probably going to be disillusioned by the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, why else would he be gone? 
Yeah. How much do you think you love that animal? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like it's boobs. Yeah. It looks more like it's balls. Didn't, didn't that animal really look at Ray ball. going like, it's yes, a living? Yes, he did. It looked at the look yeah. gate audience as a weird, gross look. That was it's gross. It's a living. Oh, God. Okay. So why why did, it's so why gross. Did, but, uh, Star Wars is, is weird and gross. gross. There was There's finally some sex. Okay, but to go back to, I remember, James, when you, when you, when we talked on the phone, you didn't go... You guys didn't like Luke at all. Luke's no. thing at all. No. Uh, no, 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 no. I feel like it was a total character assassination. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to be like, okay, yeah, you know, he's a little dissolution with the Jedi or like, you know, the way things that used to be. I think it's another thing entirely to be like, hey, I'm going to abandon everyone that I've ever known uh, while we're in the ooh. biggest crisis of the universe that we know of. And I'm just going to wait it out. Mm. Let's just see what happens. I'm like, I don't buy that. And I also don't buy that, like, he just... I feel like they just wrote him as this weird curmudgeon old man that I feel like the most hopeful character that like I can sort of think of offhand would completely just abandon everyone and everything and every ideal that they ever had. And it's one thing to be like, hey, yeah, I don't like how the old Jedi did things. I'm going to do it differently. And even if I try to do it differently, then maybe I screwed up with my nephew. But like, hey, just say, fuck it. Like, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. Even like when Yoda and Obi-Wan were completely, they completely lost. They're like, okay, we're going to have to hide out, but we've got a plan. We're going to try again. Luke was just like, I'm just going to hide out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then nothing else. Like I'm just gonna hide out. Uh, fuck my sister. Fuck my friends. Um, well, he tried. He like, did kiss her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like <laughs> the hell why, did, why did it have to go there? Is what I want to know. Just, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it's it's not even that. Like it's not even that he wasn't even in the movie or he didn't train Ray. I just felt like they turned him into what they wanted for the film and not who Luke Skywalker actually was or is. And I guess people change over time. I understand that. But it just seemed like such a sharp yeah. turn to be like, mm-hmm. to, to go from saving the galaxy to believing that anyone can be redeemed to being like, well, shit sucks and I'm just going to throw in the towel and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Like, I didn't, and just doesn't feel right to me. Does okay. Mark Hamill even say, like, yeah. he, was he was real upset. He kind of dumb, dumb, though. Well, all right. <laughs> I think he just no, wanted like, to fight someone with a sword. Yeah. But, like, on some level, right, who knows this character better than he does and for him to be as upset as he was should tell us all something. But he, but he's also just, I mean, this is a tangent, but he's also just like a consummate artist and like kind of just went with it. He's like, it's the writer's decision. Like I'm right. going with it. And mm-hmm. I still think he, you know, whether or not you agree or disagree with where the character went, I think he pulled off a really good performance in the film. Oh, I agree I with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, <laughs> but I, like, I do think I do think, though, that the fact that he didn't want to be there comes through He didn't say he didn't want to be no, there. No, no, no. Not that he didn't want to be there, but that he yeah. didn't believe in the work. You know what I mean? He didn't believe in some of the dialogue, and you can kind of tell. He didn't believe in... Just like there's little moments here and there, and you're like, mm, Mark Hamill doesn't believe in this moment right now. Whereas Harrison Ford, you know... Harrison Ford doesn't care what lines he's... In, 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 that's what I'm saying. I think in Force <laughs> Awakens... He would have said any fucking lie. I think he would have delivered it It was nice talking. to like, Harrison Ford give a shit for once. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, like, Harrison Ford is fun playing that character. Yeah. Well, that and Blade Runner, but because like for the past 10 years, he just hasn't given a shit in other movies. Yeah. But, he'll do, uh, I, he'll do what I was saying before, though, that this is a, a series rejuvenation. I think it's all centered on Luke and that speech he gives about the Jedi and, and about how it, it was, you know, they were cursed because of their own hubris. I think that's the single most important speech like in Star Wars history like because it yeah. Yeah. reconciles the events of the prequels and acknowledges that they were kind of shitty movies but also, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. in a meta way, but also yeah. acknowledges yeah. that the Jedi Ethically. at the time yeah. made huge mistakes. And then it also acknowledges for the audience that like your heroes are not like who they seem to be, which for me, I thought was like a really? moving idea that like, you know, we grow up worshiping these people, and then you meet, you become an adult, and you see them for who they are, and they're just kind of yeah. like a saddle. Uh, you know, I'll say I, I, I like that, and I like the this idea that Jedi have to die, and maybe taking down something that, you know, in maybe previous movies was like, no, the Jedi are just good, and that's it. Yeah. I kind of like challenging that from the previous movies. I will say that this movie has some ideas that 
that is one of them that they kind of then pull back at the end. Because they say, the Jedi must die. But then at the end of the movie, he says, I am not the last Jedi. And it's implied that way over the next one. Well, so, the Jedi, and there's these well, children no, 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 no. that are not any Jedi. Well, because, because, no, we don't that, think it's going to happen. Well, but, because that is written into the, into the script as Luke's ideal that he currently has at the time because he's very cynical. Mm-hmm. But then he... As he's about to burn the gen- the sacred text, yeah. <laughs> as he's about to burn the, which is a weird line, but as he's about to burn the text, he, he gets that visit from Yoda, mm-hmm. which you know you so see the back of your head, and at first you're like, oh no, what? And then, oh, I love it. but it has such a great purpose that scene How because can they it shows this movie if they use the Yoda puppet. Well, <laughs> well, no, but but then that scene, I have something to you say about that. Puppet? I I actually think that was a better depiction of Yoda that's true to the original prequel than the fir- than the 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 original trilogy yeah. than the prequels. Yeah. The prequels yeah, are exactly actually terrible. Well, no, 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 not just that. I mean, like, the characterization yeah. of Yoda yeah. in the prequel movies, not as good at well, matching because, the originals. Well, because as Luke it. doesn't realize yeah. that Yoda's lesson that made him grow was the fact that he didn't want to teach Luke at first because he's, like, right. he's too old. Like, right. he's not, yeah. not going to be able to learn anything. Like that, really. And then he didn't Luke go to that has the same thing where he's like, what am I going to do? Like, I can't help anybody. And then Yoda tells him, like, no matter how hard you try, like they are what we like right. grow beyond. Or they are what, what like we grow beyond, or something like that. They the, grow. They, 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 the like, burden of every master is that like they they grow beyond us. Like, yeah, they become what they grow beyond. It's like you can't you can't stop you know, things. And, like, yeah. yeah. These uh-huh. films are going to become better than he ever dreamed. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Which well, I think too, Last Jedi is way better than any other stuff. I, I think too is it's Luke. Luke, 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 Luke is made. Well, I think it's Luke. Luke's a competition. Well, I think it's like no matter no matter how many mistakes you make and how catastrophic they can be, things still continue on, and 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 there's yeah, still cool. there, there's a notion that like just because it happened one way doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen the same way again. Like it's it's going to be a, a learning process every single time. And I love that. I mean, people obviously, you know, there's, I guess now I can talk more officially about Luke, but like there's more of like a discrepancy at first, right? You know, people, you said it was a character assassination. Mm-hmm. And I can definitely understand that analysis of the character because yes, like it's like he just left. And it's like, okay, well, the Luke Skywalker of this previous trilogy is very much a, kind of a scruffy, like, you know, it doesn't back down, like very courageous. So why would this happen? A little line, you know, Brad. Yeah, <laughs> well, mighty Brad. He doesn't understand what he's doing, and, and becomes more wise. He's emotional, but he doesn't realize um, because it, what what I like about the character is that you know honestly I think they realize that people would be very upset about us. So then they re, they delay the reveal towards the middle of the movie that it was his mistake that caused something so horrible and so catastrophic. His own nephew, after realizing that. His uncle even had like a thought that he wanted and to kill him. It was pretty traumatized. Yeah, he that's killed horrible. the entire Jedi Order. He, he then tried to <laughs> well, kill Luke. He killed all of his. I guys. think he it's hasn't like, thought about that though. Uh, well, uh, I wanted to, uh, Dom. You made a good point about like one of the other themes of this movie, and I think this one where it does kind of stick the landing is the idea of legacies and uh, being a hero. Yeah. Even like oh, we, we, we can we, we can talk about like the idea of uh, like Holdo's plan, but Holdo's like I don't. She didn't need to be a hero and say I'm going to do this. I think uh, uh, Luke's like realizes like he is the, the hero that people see him as. I will go out this way maybe we can argue if he should have died or should have not that the movie's made but his legacy of being a hero at the end kind of is once again shown with the kids are talking about him he's inspiring well, he, well, and i do like that I, I like i do like that character arc from like you know the idea of our heroes having these beards like kratos logan all these like these bitter old men mm-hmm. kind of learning something and Maybe it's a little futzy lot. Like they deleted a scene that was only 16 seconds of him acknowledging Han's death. Or oh, like you deleted that and you kept a, you kept a tit scene. <laughs> and that, and, and yeah. also and this is kind of like a I don't know. Yeah. But like you went to bat. He, yeah. he went to bat for his fought. Like you know I think Darth Vader could be saved. Mm-hmm. And he's like oh this kid has something in him. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you think it out on the walk there instead of like right there at the bed. I understand it's thematic oh, and stuff, yeah. but it's just like I, I guess if it had to be executed, um. It's something that makes me laugh. It doesn't really do that much for the movie, but I think uh, in terms of failure, the other thing, there's three themes uh, for me, letting go of the past, 
legacy being hero and failure. I think failure can kind of be jumbled. There's too many dumb characters in this movie, but I think they really kind of nailed I, it. I wouldn't even it, call it being hero. I wouldn't even call it dumb. It's just that certain events happen in a way that would seem like, oh, like, I guess this movie's not going to play out that way. So it's like, you know, like, it, it almost, like, subverts your... I will say, like, in terms of... We're not saying things, so, yeah. like, There's some stuff subverted here that's like, wow, that's great. And then there's some stuff that's like, okay, but why? Like, yeah, why? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, why? Yeah, but yeah. why? I feel like we're just... Yeah, we're yeah, just, like, subverting like, everything. Like, 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 I'm like, it's I, like, not an enjoyable experience. Well, I'll say that in the way that, like, I like how the end result is for those subverted expectations, but I think that you could cut off some of them because it just seems like at the end a constant oppression okay. of like nope 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 and then it's like all right you just need like them failing like it doesn't need to be like oh they failed this and then that and then that one of this movie's that. strengths like, for me is the thing well, it yeah. really like he uh is i think ryan johnson really t- just kind of got yeah. the themes right I, down pat I, <laughs> okay okay that's fair um i think uh this movie uh we brought up before but you know we uh like i think someone wanted to mention the humor in this movie before mm. i find this movie has some moments in it that completely deflate any sort of like <laughs> mood or tension that's trying to be established mm-hmm. like the you know, beginning the beginning when it's like you know am i coming through i think oh that, my god you know like moments like that i'm like uh i i it's like that's like a swing and a miss also like there are just like little things that kind of bug me, like you know Ray. When Ray at the end comes in the Millennial Falcon and she's luring like people away. Millennium. She, Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> the Millennial Falcon. I'll subtract a thousand points from myself. Yeah. Our Proctor gets ten points. I'm gonna cut that out and erase your memories of that. But the, she's on the, mil, the Millennium Falcon, and she has this line. <laughs> Did I get that right? Yes, time? yes. Okay. It's just funny. It's the Aluminum Falcon. <laughs> the Aluminum Falcon. No, I like it better. I'm in charge. You can't make fun of me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, boomer. Like, um, okay. Oh, God. Uh, so That's what this is, is when you yeah, first, right? this is like when she's on that, and she's like luring the troops away. It's the first time after that intense scene she just had with like, you know, Snoke and mm-hmm. trying to, you know, reason with Kylo. And she has this really bizarre moment for me where she's shooting at the First Order and she goes, now this I like, or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. And it's like, well, oh, it's like, well like, yeah. like, this, you know, this is fun. I'm like, well, where did this, I, where did this come from? I feel like oh, that, I just, I, I, I feel like I, that is another moment of them yeah. trying to like be like, yeah. you know, funny again or something or charming. And I feel like that kind of missed it for me. I, maybe that's like a nitpick, but I feel like there's like, a bunch of that in the movie. There's a bunch of these kind of little yeah, things. I call it like, like Marvel style humor. Like I feel like yeah. we've got these weird, like almost character breaking moments where they say like these weird jokes and stuff almost like modern jokes that are like mixed into like yeah the, the, the but they sort of just address it like it's normal i feel like it takes me out of the movie like well even like on the rewatch of like marvel movies i think i watched like thor ragnarok i was like i'm really not feeling this without everybody else laughing you know what i mean and i think like you said they do it a lot in the movie yeah well, it kind of just takes you out of it in my opinion i, I agree with the sentiment fully and i i think it's true in every single recent star wars movie however in older Star Wars movies, mm, I funny would too. carry this yeah. sentiment onto them as well, where you have a scene, like, the <laughs> where you have a scene with a bear, a, a little bear person uh, trying to pick up their dead friend. Oh yeah. And then, <laughs> and then the scene right after that is Chewbacca swinging on a vine doing a Tarzan. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't call these things totally balanced. Like I just, I don't know. Yeah, like, that's a good thing, point. Right? Yeah, it's You're just like. Like, you're in the middle of a serious conversation, right, between Luke and Ray, right? And it's like, first conversation ever. Where are you from? I'm from nowhere. No one's from nowhere. I'm from Jakku. Okay. That is pretty much nowhere. But now I'm serious again. And it's like... Oh, you know what? You know what? The, remember, remember when Ray is like in that, like, um, she goes into that that black hole, and then she like, yeah. there's like the reflection of herself going like for infinity. I thought that was interesting, but then they do this thing where it's like she snaps her fingers, and like that I thought was like goofy. Like they're oh, really? trying to set up this like really cool moment, and then she snaps her fingers, and it kind of sounds like people doing like jazz hands or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> snap, 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 snap. Uh, <laughs> uh, like I don't know. I, 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 is that I just feel like it, the humor, yes. like the humor, <laughs> I think Andy made a good point. Minus points for you. <laughs> I think Andy made a good point. I just think uh, some of the jokes 
probably just didn't work on this one at least but neither here or there I we have one last character to get and I'll start with the overarching question and it's not it's not the character in the question but hold those plan does it make sense and this is regarding Poe and his art but I know this is, kind of, this is the biggest mess that the movie makes right yeah, yeah. I never it's really Poe. dug into it I was like yeah she's fine right? yeah. I'm so yeah. won over by Luke and all those I just, scenes I'd say, no. okay. I say no I say no I think, um, like, all the conflict that happened aboard the ship could have just been avoided with um, her revealing anything to yeah. Poe, anything at all. Mm -hmm. You know, like, even like, hey, you got to trust me as a superior officer. Like, there could be a mole here, so I can't tell you everything, yeah. but trust me that there's a th anything. The I have a plan. Right? That's, That's it. it. He's like your highest ranking officer outside of yourself. You know what I mean? You're second in command, basically. Yeah. You can't reveal anything that would have cut you know they just would have preserved the morale of your men and also it, could, also, it didn't make any sense I'm I don't sorry. Why, it's so, bad leadership it's like it, it, it makes me feel like it, there's there's a stigma <laughs> around women in charge, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, oh, they're too emotional or oh, they're too this. And I, but like it's like a whole thing, right? And so in this moment I'm like you know better, lady. You already know that Paul's super fucking impulsive. You know that he's going to do, like, right. take two seconds oh, no. to to fucking extinguish like that. And, like, but, like, I feel like that's what the just, filmmakers are trying to say, though. That, I know, but yeah, I think like, it, like, came off impulsive. kind of, it right. ended up making no, Paul look bad instead of Paul looking good. They're not making well, her look like a good leader. Well, it's like, they probably, well, that's, that's, that's yeah. like the thing that turns on its head. They try to make it seem like Poe's right, and and what's the character's right. name? Yeah. Aldo. Aldo is wrong, but then it turns out the other way around. Um, I but, think, so that's Poe's, I that's think the Poe's filmmakers part. are trying to say, like, men need to chill the fuck out and let women right. lead when they're in power. But right. instead, I was, like, I was sitting there going, and, like, maybe this is me being a feminist, but, like, also, whatever. Like, I was sitting there going, like, why didn't you depict her as a better leader? Yeah. Why, yeah. why is Leia the only good leader well, that's also a female? That's well, she was, but, like... They made you think she was. No, but even still, you did not communicate. You're not a good leader. Oh, okay. Like, what I'm would happen sorry. If she did communicate it to him. Would that have been. She would have had his support, yeah. and he, as the best fighter pilot, her second in command, could have allayed the fears of all the rest of the crew Probably. that were there. They're, they're you know, worried about dying. Maybe they would have really talked them. about both of their fucking plans yeah. and worked together. Well, no one died, by the way. Just let me. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a movie. Except for the, the, the characters the, in the movie. movie. I will say that. Uh, that I will say this. I will say this that a lot of people, like at the end of the movie, I, uh, I, the one comparison I will make to Empire, or it's not even a comparison. Uh, Empire ends on this bittersweet note, like, okay, we lost, but the fight is still going. We're looking out into the distance. Sure. Uh, this movie ends on everyone's like, hey, we made it! Hugs! <laughs> and the porgs are around and Chewbacca's juggling them. There's like just the five of them. Like. There's only 19 of them. <laughs> yes. You guys should be going like, you know, to ask yeah, friends. Weird. Like, it's, it's so, so, it's it's so weird. Though. They should be singing It should be bittersweet. It should be, it should be, it should be well, bittersweet. They didn't think, did did think that they were about to all die. Well, so, they would be like hundreds of dozens. I'm like, you know, like... I saw like Poe's going up to the alien going, hey buddy. Wait, 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 wait. So like I think that's Poe's character arc, right? Is that like he has to learn it's not all about being gun ho, right? Like yeah, you know, you have to do that. Yeah, exactly. My, but like I don't know if I like that, you know, like basically hundreds of people had to die for one yeah. character to learn his lesson. Yep. Like, was that really worth it? And to me, I feel like rewatching this now and seeing that well, makes me. Not, I feel like I. That's not his fault though. Well, no, Del Toro ends up well, betraying them. Like, because like he started yeah. the chain of events. Maybe it's his fault. People I, die then. Right, and I feel like. Well, 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 because because no, no, I feel yeah, like just you know, watching yeah. it this time, I really found myself disliking Poe, and I don't think I was supposed to. My, I. I think my problem, though, with that plot line is that a, a lot of it relies on the fact that the writers want you to empathize and to understand Poe's character before you go into the movie. The problem is that he was barely developed in The Force yeah. Awakens. They barely yeah. used him in that movie, which is like, okay, maybe they'll jump into him a little bit more in the second movie, which they end up doing. But then it's still very, very underutilized because the story is flipping back so much. So the mm -hmm. pacing is not that because that is pretty much the central hub of the film, right? Like that is like the struggle. Like we have to do this so that we can get back there. So 
you're kind of more focusing on like, all right, where are my other characters now? Like, and Poe's just still there, like holding them off. So then it, it still ends up being like, well, Poe's not really being used in this movie. So why is there so much like weird plot things happening near him when mm-hmm. I don't understand his character yet? Like, I understand that he's impulsive, right. but I, and I understand why they wouldn't tell him the plot, like, you know, what the plan is, but I don't, like care enough about him yeah and therefore like i am just kind of like watching it happen like the events just seem kind of like a meandering of like different things happening different twists and you're just like like the timing and the math just doesn't shit. feel like it makes any fucking sense like how are we having time to go to that these x y and z things oh well that i mean like, star wars just, i think my well, yeah, well, okay, but I, did, like, I think that like you know so you have these three storylines like supposedly going on at the same time but like Ray, like the the, the it's happening Parker planet that they're there for like there's... several days, right? So would that mean that this chase isn't is going it, on for several days? Isn't it like three days? But they yeah. do say that they have like six hours of fuel on the right. Thing. And then, but then also you have and to figure. <laughs> well, no, that one I ha- that one I have feelings about because I think that like you're supposed to believe that at the end of Force Awakens she's taking the time to go straight there and she doesn't get this like this it's going to take her a while mm-hmm. so at the end of a for- of force awakens you have to believe that that takes place in the future that part and then which part so Sorry. the part where she's for two seconds on the end yeah. that's in the future and then at the beginning of this oh movie, she's out her dream no, when she's just on the kinda, at the very end of first. Oh, oh, at the see, end. Sorry, sorry. sorry yeah. So when she's but I on the really island with Luke, it, yeah. and then it backtracks, but have to take into consideration the, the travel yeah. time. So I think yeah. that this yeah. movie takes yeah. place yeah. multiple times because you've got the present yeah. and then the six hours, yeah. and then it's like oh. Is it black out? Something this movie feels like well, six way, hours. Like, this makes sense. Sense. I have to rewatch that. This movie feels like six but hours. So, yeah. But so since it's multiple days on island planet, right, you, yeah. th- that must have happened in the past and then she took the time to travel. Yeah. But the only way that that doesn't work is because she's also having telekinesis with Kylo oh, Ren. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where it's Oh, you're hard. right. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, I was able to place it together and I was like, this all works. This all works. And then I was like, but fuck, she's in the present having fucking t- hand time with Kylo Ren. Yeah. And it makes no fucking sense. And then, and you then know, I You know what's the you know, answer? That's what it says on DVD. Yeah. Put on a fucking shirt, guys. Yeah, I want you guys to just follow me for a second because something serendipitous happened when Keith was here before so, yeah. we were preparing and we put on a movie called Off the Time and the spy who shagged me. And there's a moment in yeah, that movie similar. when they're putting <laughs> out they're putting out like, hours. Like the meta moment, Austin Powers is saying, Well, this time travel doesn't make any sense, right? And then uh the the Basil, like, Basil says to him in the no, camera, it's, it's best to just not worry about it and enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I will say and he did perhaps do- that is serendipitous because true. maybe we should like get out of the like roots of you know, these maybe like plot. He did do that in another movie too. Ryan John he's like I think Ryan Johnson is a kind of uh, uh, Looper. Uh, Looper. Uh, Looper. Uh, Bruce Willis is like, don't think about time travel. We're going to be here all day thinking about the mm-hmm. logistics of it. And I think <laughs> Brian Johnson is kind of like, hey, yeah. don't think about the rule. Like, I... I that doesn't you guys seem to have problems with some like space travel and camera. force works. I remember watching that uh, hyperdrive scene, and I think watching that like in theaters, I went, "Wow!" Dude, I think I that, that was really cool. Don't get me wrong, uh, that was a really really cool shot. Like I, I really fun. Yeah, that. It, was, it was really fun to watch. Fun to watch. It was also call, like, oh, uh, why not just like make fire. hyperdrive missiles yeah. and just call it a day? Why, <laughs> are having, why are we having all of these like shit? Don't well, think about it. Like, don't think about it. Why not? Like I really. We talk about like I mean you said JJ how like the ending is kind of a uh, drawn out but I I don't know like I I was waiting for like the payoff for like what Luke was kind of yeah you get Luke in the story. end I was like, like and that's what it's all about it's, it's, it's like it's here he fights he sort of leaves them and dies but, but does he die he just sort of fades away we don't he just know just hey, guys oh, no, no one's ever, ever, ever really gone get out I, Yoda showed up when Jedi's <laughs> die their bodies disappear I wish they would stop that too I'm I'm like that once in many Force goes I was waiting to see yeah, Sam Jackson yeah. pop up. It's like, yeah, burn that tree down. Also, is order, he going to be in the next movie? Yes. yes. So then, oh, well, well, uh, that probably is a ghost. Yeah, but... Yeah. Well, yeah, you see, that's another thing of me maybe thinking this movie... 
and then maybe the trilogy as a whole is pulling back its punches. Because yeah, yeah. if you're saying, you know, like let the past die, watching that uh, supposedly dies at the end, well, and now we're gonna focus on new characters. Like Palpatine. Basically, oh my God. now oh, the new God. movie, the <laughs> title, but the very title, <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. I guess maybe we're not focusing on these new well, characters anymore. Just, are you guys excited? For the new one, it, 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 as of this recording, it's going to come out this I think you maybe, guys like the J.J. Abrams one. Well, I didn't. I was hopeful at the end of the J.J. Abrams one. I wouldn't say like I was like this is kind of like oh, you know so that really, almost like uh, yeah, not a shot for shot, but like you know point for point, beat for beat, the uh, new hope. Yeah. I was like all right, maybe they're just trying to warm us back up. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I thought that's kind of what was going yeah, on. I was having a story. I'm going to go into this next movie the same as I went into last year, like completely trying to free myself. Of any expectations, but it's gonna be hard because like a lot of people now are saying like, "Well, yeah, you bring back this thing, bring back this thing." So no, no, you don't need to go fly. See, well, what's happening is Disney's getting scared. I think. I think they're worried about like, "Oh, we're yeah, not gonna make as much money yeah, yeah. as we yeah. thought." Well, solo you know? kind of. As in, just, like, like, yeah. Yeah. But my grand theory, oh, sorry, my grand theory is <laughs> sort of like Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when the first one came out? And it was a major hit. Yeah, yeah. and we we're like, "Wow, this is amazing!" And all of a sudden, they're like, "Okay, we have to make more of these movies yeah. real fast." So they just started making the movie without like really piecing together what this trilogy was going to be yeah. and I feel like that's kind of what happened with this new one it's like yeah. oh we have the rights now okay we'll make the first one and then they're like we're just gonna start on the second one right away like they didn't actually feel like take the time to like what story are we trying to take over these three movies like yeah. what's the point of this trilogy I agree. well we're just making a trilogy and I feel like it's so yeah. disjointed yeah. and disconnected that's, that's what happened the screenwriters yeah. 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 Away. we he fired because he wanted to spend two years about like the script like he normally does mm -hmm. like, you know, we need this in four months yeah that's so true. you might be right that yeah. Yeah. Be but with all of that said because like I think what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was about to say people who hate Last Jedi love Rogue I yeah. think yeah. Rogue yeah. 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 was a piece there. of and art you love it too? Yeah. I think it's a piece oh. of art and really? I agree it, I hate Rogue when I look at it I, I think it's yeah. one of my I'm favorite Andy, Star Wars yes. movies period oh. end of sentence so weird and that they have those things so sense. but here's my thing mm. When I when I go to go see the the rise of, of Skywalker, I'm going to be saying, well, they made Rogue One, so maybe you know what I mean? Because I think Rogue One is a piece of art, and so they did Force Awakens first, and they dusted off the thing, and then they made Rogue One, and it was a gorgeous. Ah, you look like gorgeous for you look cool. Like, no, 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 gorgeous in terms of like, it paid <laughs> such beautiful uh, homage, and, um, yes, and made me like, care about new characters, but no. also didn't force weird romance Here that doesn't work. And like, is the division? Yes, because I hate homage. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's a crush. I think it's maybe the but it's all it's homage. totally unoriginal thing to do. Yeah, yeah. and last year yeah. is like fuck homage. Yeah, that's why I love it. Like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all of it yeah. is inherently homage because it is part of the same franchise. Right, you can't it's avoid true. it, but at the it's same time, time you can comment like, on fuck it. The past. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I yeah. feel like because of the way that Rogue One is um, set up, it's almost less homage than The Last Jedi because you're not actually focusing so much on old characters That's that you're planting So having Darth Vader in the movie, even though he has but no homage. He's, he's not really, but he's not really right. in that he's movie. All right, when we do the Rogue One episode, no well, we do plan to have you guys back. We do plan to have you guys back for The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and so actually, so I think we're so Okay, guys, time, yeah. time out. Time out. <laughs> Order. Uh, <laughs> Andy and I are going to spend the night talking about Rogue One We better get that gavel sound effect. But basically... I my solo. God, God. Can we all agree that that's trash? I've never seen it. You've never seen it? I like barely I saw like 10 minutes of it. I saw it on the record before it gets lost. Either that my favorite piece of Star Wars media is the, the Clone Wars TV show. Oh yeah, Not okay. I'll give you that. Yeah, no, that's really good. Clone the Wars computer movie. generated one. Oh, I came out on the serialized one. I love Chris this. Chris Nash Jr. Anyway, okay, okay. Okay. That's okay. What I want to say. Okay, guys. So you know, Star Wars. I think we will say like, <laughs> if anything else, you know, at least these movies make us feel very. And we're very invested in this franchise, and we're all at least fans. So. <laughs> Uh, well, I, there's nothing I can do for you about that. Uh, so, I think um, you know we might now just maybe touch on maybe our last things we may want to bring up that maybe wasn't brought up before, and then we'll give maybe our our own scores, and we'll see where sure. as a whole we we land. What what do you guys like as, as team like critics who like mm -hmm. this movie? 
what is like maybe like a final argument? Like, what do you think really sells this movie and makes it work at the end of the day? That you know, you've seen it, you saw it two years ago, you're still enjoying it now. What yeah. what prevails for you? Final argument, I would say, for the series to continue, we need movies like this. That's what I think. Okay, that could bring more new ideas and try new things. Yes, that are are um, are like confident and courageous enough to like say the things that are like. Like it's interesting that Luke Skywalker is not the man like that we thought he was. It would it would be less interesting if we just watched a film where Luke Skywalker is just kicking everyone's ass. To me, this is an interesting choice. Yep. It's a courageous choice, and it's cool that Disney like allowed them to do that. Okay. Yeah, I I would say verbatim all that, and I also think um, just in terms. Of, I mean, you can make this argument for the prequels, unfortunately, too. But I think like just bringing your story into a new kind of like area is is something very foreign today. Like again, say what you want about the prequels. I don't like them. I think they're absolute trash. But I think the fact that they even tried to make something so different than what is usually expected of Star Wars is admirable alone. And I think like stories today play it so safe, especially in franchises. I think, you know, a lot of people just go in for what they expect and that's kind of like where the businesses know they're going to make their money. And for Star Wars to, uh, to take that weird left turn, um, but still do it in a way that comments on the work. And, um, again, like you said, is very brave in how it approaches it, especially with a fan base as large and vast, it, it, not only just like in terms of opinion, but just from different walks of life. I mean, like it's it's a big thing to, to, to comment on your own work in a film, especially when so many people love it and expect a certain thing out of it. And uh, every time I see this movie, I, I, I see something new in that. Okay. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. James? Um, I think... Overall, the plot points were underdeveloped. The characters were underdeveloped. Um, I think the entire experience was half-baked outside of the visual aspect of it. It did look visually stunning. I think they spent a lot of money on that. Um, and I think this movie was borderline antagonistic to the fan base um, mm -hmm. of the movies, uh, of Star Wars, I should say. Uh, and I think that this is more Disney thinking with dollar signs mm. as opposed to thinking about making a good movie. So I think they kind of just rushed these movies into production. Um, they didn't have an overarching idea of what these three, they came into the idea with it going to be a trilogy. They didn't develop them like they were going to be a trilogy. And I think that shows. And I think the overall experience is just, I don't think it's fun to watch. Um, I think, yeah, I think Ryan Johnson tried to do some good things. I just didn't think, or I shouldn't say good, different things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, new takes on things. I just don't think the execution was really there. Um, yeah, I just, I almost felt like this was made to, I don't, part of me thinks like this was made to be controversial. Part of me feels that way. Um, I would agree with that. You know, Maybe. but I, yeah. and I think like it's Ryan Johnson wanted to, you know, do a Ryan Johnson movie as opposed to like a Star Wars movie. And I also think it's Disney just trying to cash in as quickly as possible. Led to, led to this overall half-baked experience in The Last Jedi. Okay. Mm -hmm. I agree with everything James said, and I think that the result of that is that the movie doesn't work well as a standalone film at all, mm -hmm. but it also doesn't work well as a direct follow-up to the movie that preceded it. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a huge disconnect between what it felt like we were building up to and where we are. It's like... Sure. I feel like it's all the build up and no orgasm. Like I feel like that's I feel like that's where we are. You know what I mean? I left I, I left this movie with blue balls. I hope that I reach a climax in this right. has gotten really far, but like I hope that we get the payoff. Do you want to start over with a different metaphor? Yeah. Sure. It's like yeah, I'm thinking about someone else now. Yeah, what else, what else can I wait? But what else can I use? This is going. We're already here. Like, yeah, no, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's we, really I'm kidding. Like, keep going. Keep going. So, but it, but here's my thing, right? It's like we got all this build up from The Force Awakens, and we didn't get there with The Last Jedi. I feel yeah. like it was like you missed your mark, and I hope we can redirect ourselves so that we hit it with The Rise of Skywalker. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like this movie neither stands alone nor complements what came before it. And that's a shame because we have some really great characters and missed opportunities with them. Oh. And I don't care about the new ones that are introduced. I only care about the ones from Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. And even those, I feel like, 
like R.I.P. Phasma because I I barely knew he. You know what I mean? Like R. R.I.P. Purple Hair. I barely knew he. Like R.I.P. All these people because I feel like. Yeah. Akbar's unceremonious A- death. Akbar, like, again, like, you know. Uh, it's like, he was essential to the plot. No, but come on. <laughs> you guys have not had him there if you're just right. going to do him dirty don't like that. Don't like, what are you doing? Like, he's, he's a meme. He's not even a character. But you're over here saying that the homage, <laughs> keep the homage out of here. And I'm okay, but like, all right, gang, how about they, this? Yeah, <laughs> you can bring him in the movie. They were like, he's dead. He's done. You don't have to put him in a movie. He's like, look, 40 year old guy who hasn't moved out of his pain. And like, where's that? <laughs> when he said it's a trap, I came with my dude. <laughs> all of you. Dang. I am glad it's open. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Gabe. Okay. Buy another t-shirt, you idiot. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a huge Star Wars fans. Yeah, I know, but like, I'm not like, if like, if Star Wars died, if it was a person, I wouldn't be like, Crying over its grave, like I already saw the guy uh, several times. Yeah, it, it already got shot in the head for me. I've seen horrors already. All right, <laughs> so let's. So, what would you guys have before we keep our, yeah. our thoughts and see like who swayed us the most? You guys reveal your personal like percentage score for this movie Jesus. that will uh, keep you have your thousand percent. All right, get out. Thank you. Like the mid, like like nineties, like you know, ninety three. A ninety three? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Rate. <laughs> uh Andy. Yeah, I was I'd say like a, a ninety two. Ninety three wow. and a ninety two from team uh critics. Team audience, what are your personal scores? I'm like Forty, forty-one. <laughs> That's close to what the audience. Is. Yeah, we'll give you really? the because there. honestly, there were things that were fun to like just watch with my eyeballs. Yeah. yeah. All right. And that, that, <laughs> that is worth. Like all I'm just saying, less lightsabers. Like in an and an that's why Martin Scorsese makes it fun you know, for the not, eyeballs. It's not gonna like carry you, but it's worth something. Yeah. And I'm okay. giving you props for that. And I'm also giving you some props. I'm gonna say, you know, because. I think just visuals would be like at 30 ish. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But I'll give you props for trying different stuff, mm-hmm. faulty execution, big time, major failures in that regard, but you try. So I'll give you a little bit of points for this. So about 41 ish. Yeah. Okay, 41 for 41. James yeah. and uh, Heather. I'd say I'd go a little higher, maybe like 45, only because, like, I want to give you points for your Yoda puppet. I want to give you <laughs> points for, like, the couple things here and there. You lose points for Mary Poppins Leia, but, like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I feel like there's a couple of things here and there where I'm just like, it is, you know, it is still Star Wars and it is still fun to watch, but man, like, it's a shitty movie. So. Uh, okay. So, um, Keith, I will start with you. What, what, what are your thoughts on all of this? And, you know, maybe have you been swayed in any direction? Uh, you know, you all like, I might say the stereotypical politics, but you all made really interesting points that I, I am at least coming out of this going like, uh, I was swayed a little bit in one direction and I do want to, uh, just say a little quick things before I, they didn't go into this with a plan, which is very disappointing. I think they set up all these characters and whether you Whatever you think about Marvel or not, they knew what they were going to do with Endgame and Thanos, and that's why yeah. I think the payoff was worked so well, as it's opposed true. to creating all yeah, it, like, as like opposed it. to just writing yeah. this and then Ryan Johnson allowing him to do his own thing completely threw it out. Mm-hmm. I really like Ryan Johnson as a writer and as a director. I I actually think it works better as a standalone, as a critique <laughs> on the franchise. Mm-hmm. I don't think it works well in the, this saga. I, I I think they're gonna retcon or redo a lot of things that wait. The Last Jedi kind of <laughs> did. I don't even think the studio I think or Jake, win back I think they're gonna try to win back. Gonna try yeah. to win back. Gonna I think this movie. I think this like movie. In the middle instead of actually saying something. Yeah, it's gonna be like Rogue One. But this movie. Yeah, I love this movie guys. being uh, since we're talking about this movie, I would equate it to like a really good gymnastics do, uh, gymnast doing all this really amazing stuff in the air and then breaking her leg on the thing. She still has one leg to stand on, though. <laughs> um, okay. But I think... Okay. I think it's a different analogy. She, but okay. she tries a lot of very interesting things and right. just, mm. in some ways, is not fully executed well, but I respect... It, it, I This movie 
this is the most controversial movie, the most divisive movie I can think of at this moment right now. And I did love this discussion. Hard down, I'm giving it a 68. Interesting. Because I, I was really in the middle before, and I think, I so do think it will... Teeter it a bit towards... I think one thing, time will be all right to this movie. I think people who hate it will be like, eh, it's not bad. It's not bad over time, and people will kind of be like, oh, it did, this movie did have something to say. Can I, uh, can I give it my own analogy? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's like a guy doing a really good, uh, like, jet ski kind of, like, showcase. Like, everyone's like, ooh, ah, and he does a couple tricks, but at the end of the showcase, he, like, decapitates a guy, <laughs> like, on the pier. And like, why the hell did you kill that guy? And he's like, well, he killed JFK. He didn't know that. <laughs> Some people are like, I, well, I know that guy. He did. And half people are like, well, he might be right. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be debating for as long as we can. He's our hero. Does yeah. anyone have any other metaphors or analogies? <laughs> We had sex, we gymnastics, had, I thought my metaphor was straight. Okay, so fuck you. Um, but I'm gonna give I it. it I'm gonna give it a six. I'm gonna. I always do. Doesn't take much. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a sixty-eight, and I was in the fifties before, so I was very in the middle of it. I will say, because you said something. Fifties is half, though. I think sixty-eight. Yeah, now sixty-eight. He almost. It's a tomato. He's almost passing it. He's almost passing it. But anyway, my whole thing is, you said something like. I think time will be good to this movie. I think this movie and the way that we feel about it and the way that people feel about it lasts about, what, two more weeks until when does it come out? Very true. That is going because the way that I feel about even The Force Awakens changed when I mm. saw The Last Jedi. That's very true. So all of our opinions, we may feel very differently in three weeks after we've had a minute to sit with The Rise of Skywalker. Okay. I, think, I, look at I too, think that's yeah. fair. I think maybe um, at the end of the day, we'll have to see this as the trilogy in whole. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's how we view, I mean, the originals and the prequels, right? Yeah, we'll we talk about them collectively. I, well, we only I, saw them. I will watch I, this. I, if I go through a Ryan, if I go through a Ryan Johnson yeah, sure, filmography, yeah, I will watch yeah. this yeah. separately. I do okay. think like Ryan Johnson made the movie he wanted to make. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw, okay. and I, I, I credit him for that. Well, um, you know, I find this movie to be uh, almost insincere because yes. you know. This story, it's kind of similar to the original trilogy. You know, original trilogy, it was Rebels versus Empire. This time it's Resistance mm -hmm. versus First Order. But isn't that kind of ironic? Because this story is now being told by a company that is itself an empire, mm -hmm. taking over all the little guys. Mm -hmm. And yeah. do they really mean what they're saying by fight the big oppressive powers yeah. that be? Well, they're all, they're, I yeah. don't know. They're, they're, they're pushing more of the Johnson made. Right? Well, they're, they're pushing more of like the, the political nationalism nationalism of it yeah. because you have like that really big speech in The Force Awakens like, mm -hmm. this is a <laughs> like yeah. well, okay they're Nazis got it that was not, no, it's not Disney they're Nazis um, they but, even friend saluted like yeah yeah they were like this is what we're doing what? for me um, I find well, that's one of my biggest kernel sins is a movie that's insincere mm -hmm. so for that I'm gonna be a little bold here I'm gonna give this movie you bitch a zero <laughs> wow <laughs> You know I'm kidding, but I just want to get a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> he um, subverted our expectations. Yeah, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> just like Ryan Johnson. Um, body and I respect that move more than if you get Shut. it on a censored nose. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but in actuality, um, you know, I feel like this is not a movie that I'm going to go back to anytime soon. And kind of be watching it felt like a chore. I don't really okay. find this movie that fun, and to me, Star Wars should be at the end of the day fun, and I don't really find it that fun. I'll rewatch The I, Force Awakens. I have a fun time with that, but I, I like that ultimatum for a Star Wars movie more than anything else that's right? made for film critique. You know, Star I, Wars. I, you know, by all means, you know, like subvert some expectations and maybe like challenge the viewer in certain ways, but don't forget why we're here in the first place. This is a popcorn movie that you know you said it's like. For example, for kids, and you know, it, sh it shouldn't make you this like jumbled in the head. So, um, How dare a movie treat its audience like they're smart. That's what I'm saying. But it's smart Star Wars. Yes, but listen, uh, not that's not what Star Wars set out to do in the 70s. Oh, why can't it? It does. Star Wars set out it? to be like an anti 
establishment, establishment. counterculture yeah. Vietnam era fuck fascism movie and now it's the establishment well, I, that's true now, <laughs> now it is the establishment you can't, I don't think you can market it as hey this is a family movie and at the same time being like here's like a com- com- convol- not even complex convoluted plot that subverts your expectations and destroys everything you set out to do and the market is like oh bring the whole well, family and well, have then fun. is that the issue then that no one has any idea what the fuck Star Wars is supposed to be in the first place well, I don't think about probably. Sexy Leia and Jabba the Hutt like that was not family friendly so it's not like it was ever True, super yeah. family friendly and I will friendly. say you know, it was alright in the center I don't think it was like it's the new no, and you know what? No, no one, I no one, no one. I will say, no one owns what Star Wars should be. It's different for everyone, yeah. and that's, that's fine. Nice. And you know, this movie and the future movies will maybe see, maybe not as much divisiveness, but definitely will generate discussion. And um, you know, it's going to be. You can never, you can't ever like satisfy the entire base. It's impossible. Sure. Um, but I, I think this is the first movie that no one's ever ever going to agree on one side of it. It's correct. like cilantro. No, everyone, yeah. the, the only some people love true. cilantro. I don't some think people it's ever going to The last cilantro. Yeah, I don't think it's ever going to come to a head like, like it did with Empire, where people. Right. Are like, I where everybody, everybody can come together and be like, at least there's. Wait, Empire. do you like cilantro? I do like cilantro. Oh, okay, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> do you like cilantro, James? I haven't seen it. Cilantro's <laughs> ace <of> spice. <laughs> cilantro. The herb. Well, I thought you meant. Oh, I thought you meant like a movie called cilantro, but yes, I do like the herb cilantro. Please leave that in. Do not edit that. That's fine. Some people think cilantro. They do. Yeah, yeah. I like this. You got my check. Oh, yeah, this is coming this fall. <laughs> 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 we have to make a trailer for Cilantro. <laughs> that would be so funny. What's that movie? Wait, the uh, other, uh, what in the world could a movie called Cilantro be? <laughs> no, you know what I was thinking? It's literally about the movie about, about uh, right? the drug cartels with um, <laughs> uh, oh, Sicario. <laughs> Oh Lord! Oh my God! <laughs> All right, I JJ. still haven't given my score because I'm stalling. But um, but also we're a mess. They said zero. No, that's not really a real score. Um, I to me, like I said, that the rewatchability thing is a big thing for me. I, I didn't have fun. It's and to me, it was a chore. This movie. So I'm gonna give it a um, I'm gonna give it a a, a forty five. Oh. Yeah. All right. All right. JJ. Okay. So nothing has changed. Well, well, because they were both in the middle, and now we have JJ on our team. Uh, Wait, okay, so keep on. Guys, 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 hold the phone here because you, you know, I before Keith reveals the score, uh, you know, just a quick summary. Dom and Andy were able to sway Keith towards them, and towards the dark side. Heather and James swayed me towards them. So. You know, this could go either way, but what do you got as the consensus? 64. Whoa! Okay, now here's the tricky part, though, and we haven't run into this yet. Technically, that is on the fresh side. Mathematically, it's closer to the rotten score. Correct. Mm, I think it's very apropos for after this whole conversation. I think it's... You're gonna get the people that really love it, give it the high scores, and people that really hate it, give it the low. And I think some, I think for me, this it it probably is a 64. Dare I say that maybe we are unable to pick a side this time? I want to say this: the people who love it really love it, mm-hmm. but the people who hate it can at least say, "But it's Star Wars." So like, mm-hmm. see, I know, there's a lot of people, oh, there are people who, a lot of people who are not quite so forgiving. But, okay, but on this part, on this episode, we. That's how we felt. Yeah, and I will say we have to acknowledge too that maybe some of that negative score from the audience. Yeah, there are people who dislike this movie narratively, and then there's people who are garbage humans who are yes. just like, oh, yes. right. yeah. Yeah. I saw yeah. terrible like that. Right, yeah. correct. This was a very good conversation. Right, yeah. right, and we can all like acknowledge that those garbage humans, like we will not, you know, factoring those in. Yeah, but unfortunately, this, this movie is like this franchise is subsep- has been attacked like for the wrong, for sometimes the wrong reasons. Sure. And and, um, you know, we're not any of those That's people. kind of my point, right? Is that as badly as James and I disliked this particular movie, mm. we could still say it's a Star Wars movie and it has things that are redeemable about it and it's like, mm-hmm. it's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we yeah. won't go watch it again unless, right. somebody, <laughs> yeah. so unless one of our friends has a podcast yeah, right. and makes us watch it. But. I think that both of us recognize, too, that it's not a perfect film. Like, sure. you know. No, but this is the one film for some reason that I'm like, 
I see what you're saying, but I don't respect your opinion. <laughs> 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 well, well, you. well, we can always do round <laughs> yeah, two. Yeah. I, for some reason, this is a movie where I'm like, I can't understand why you wouldn't like it. Well, yeah. that's it's the, you, only, I don't the only movies that I feel like. Yeah. And I'll say that that's that attributes your super high score because the '90s isn't yeah, it. That's up right? there. That's, that's up super there. high. And that's with A. I don't. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't usually like. I just I gotta really love a movie to put it in the '90s. And you really love this movie, but I. Like, and as much as I hate it, I can still find things to like about it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't. I, that's why I was joking about the zero yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. to say it has no merits, and that's definitely not true. Sure. Um, but I, guys, I do have to say that for the first time in Divided Films history, we are unable to pick a side. Oh, man. I don't, know the, I don't know the sound effect to play for that. Wait, well, guys, thank you very much. And to our guests who yes. come on for the second time, we really appreciate yes. you guys coming on. Wasting an hour, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely more than an hour, guys. Yeah. Um, no, this, is be, <laughs> but, this is an extra long episode. Thanks for sticking it in, guys. But seriously, like, this has been so much fun to do. This thank has you been for our great season. It's been Woo! our first season, and uh, we are gonna jump right back into it next year and uh, we look forward to doing this more we had fun doing it with you guys and we thank you to the audience for tuning in so uh join us soon guys we might have a little bit more left for you this year so tune in but until then you know please come back for more divided films thanks